Hey guys, Jesse here from Jesse on a Journey, coming to you live from my apartment in New York City. I'm just going to wait a couple more seconds to see if other people come on. I'm going to be talking about how to get to know your blog audience today. Um, for those who have been tuning in, I've been doing these weekly videos um, just to give some blog tips. I get a lot of you guys asking me how you can start your own travel blogs and how you can start these little online businesses that can help fund your travels. So I am going to be talking about that. Um, thank you to everyone who's been complimenting my brick wall. Every week I get private messages from people telling me they really like my um, the brick wall behind me. But this is my new-ish apartment. Been here about a month in the Upper East Side, so it's kind of exciting. Um, so we'll just wait a few more seconds. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm assuming most of you do, but I am Jessie Festa. My blog is Jessie on a Journey. I also have Epicure and Culture, and I am a full-time travel blogger. I make a full-time income on my blogs, and I get a lot of readers all the time asking me how they can do it as well. So for the last three and a half years, I've been teaching different online classes, helping to impart my knowledge to others. So the reason I have been doing all these short tutorial videos on Facebook is because June 1st, I am launching a new coaching program called Travel Blog Prosperity. It is a membership-based program, which means that instead of joining a class for say, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, getting a ton of information and then kind of being left to your own devices to implement it once the class is over, this is an ongoing program where you're always going to have coaching. You're always going to have a place to go for feedback. And as long as you want to be a member, you get the coaching. So that's launching June 1st. I am doing the first month for just $1 to sign up. I want everyone who gets on board to be really comfortable with the program. And then come July, it will be $49 per month and you can cancel anytime. So if you join, for June by May 16th. I'm also offering a bunch of really awesome freebies for being an early bird sign up. So I will send, uh, I'm gonna paste link a link to that after I repost this video, along with some other really awesome blogging resources. So I'll get into it. Um, we've talked in the past few weeks a lot about branding and I will re-link to some really good information on that. But something tied to branding is your audience and really knowing who you're speaking to. If you're just kind of throwing up posts that you think will be interesting, maybe one week you're writing about budget travel, the next you're talking about million dollar trips, a lot of times your content is going to fall flat because you don't really know who you're talking to. If you don't really know who you're talking to, how can you really move them? So I've got a bunch of tips here. I have my laptop gonna try to see if I can see your questions as they pop up there. I'm not sure if I really will be able to, but if I don't see them while I'm speaking, I will respond to them afterwards. So I'm gonna give you a bunch of tips. And the first one is to just start out by asking who your ideal reader is. You know, maybe you already know what you wanna write about. Maybe you already know of a service or product you wanna sell. If you already know that, then you can think about what type of person would want that product or service. If you already know what, where your knowledge lies, think about who would benefit from that knowledge. If you're just starting out, you can start fresh and you can really tailor your content to this audience. So I'd like to ask a few questions. For one, how can you help people? If you're not sure of how you can help people, you can always ask your friends and family what is something that you would come to me first for advice on and see what people say. If there's maybe a topic that you always have people asking you about, there's your answer. Uh, now, who can you help with this knowledge that you have? Who would benefit from you giving it to them? When you think about these people, consider where they're already getting advice from. You can even start doing some research to see what resources are already out there relating to the topic you're thinking about blogging about. And lastly, where does this, where do these resources fall flat? Because this is how you are gonna fill a gap. Now, once you know this information, you kind of have your mission statement. If you know, you know, I write about X and I help people do Y, 
there's your mission statement right there. And once you have that, you can make sure that everything that you put out there, whether it's a blog post, an Instagram share, an email newsletter, that it's always trying to help people do this thing. That will always be the mission, the goal. Um, the second tip I would say is creating a reader profile. And whether you're just starting out or you're already blogging, this is a great idea. It sounds silly to a lot of people, but really being able to picture the person that you're writing to is a big help. Knowing everything from what their day is like to what inspires them to what lets them down. Why do they get up in the morning? What frustrates them during the day? And this will really help you tailor the content so you can help these people, inspire these people, and get them wanting more. I will also link, after I repost this video, to a worksheet that I have. It's a get to know your blog audience Mad Lib sheet. It's kind of fun. And it will help you answer these questions that you may not know the answers to now. And it's totally free. So I will post that after. The third tip I want to say is to install Google Analytics. It is free if you have WordPress.org. You just download the plugin and Google Analytics tells you so much about your audience. Pretty much anything. There's so many features that a lot of them I don't even fully understand, but once you have it set up, you can see the age, the demographics, you know, where people are coming from. I know that most of my readers are US based and actually most of my readers are from New York, like me, which is pretty cool. Um, you can know about their income. Are they mainly using mobile or desktop? If you see that a lot of your readers are coming through on a mobile phone, you're gonna wanna, gonna wanna make sure that your blog is mobile optimized to not turn them off. Um, shows you what search terms they're using to get to your site, what they're actually reading, what they're not reading. So if you see that a certain type of content or a certain topic is really getting a lot of traffic, do more of that. If you see that something, you know, maybe you've really worked hard on this blog post and you thought it would be great and no one really read it, you can go back and really try to understand why. But it gives you a good idea of who your audience is and what they are really, you know, excited to read and what they're really kind of grabbing onto. Um, it can be slightly confusing to connect Google Analytics if you're not super tech savvy. So if you hop onto YouTube, there are a million tutorials on how to do it. So don't get frustrated. This is definitely something you want to make sure is installed, even if you need to ask someone for help. And actually, if you're not sure, you can send me a message. I'll give you a video, video tutorial on how to do it. Um, the fourth tip I wanted to provide is making use of Reddit. I'm sure you know most of you have heard of Reddit, maybe you're even on it. It is one of the greatest tools for finding out about your niche. So Reddit has a subreddit pretty much about every topic there is out there. And going to your niche's subreddit forum gives you a lot of information on what questions your readers might have, what are their pain points so that you can solve them, and how do they, they digest content. So if you write about solo female travel, you might go to the solo female travel or solo travel subreddit and see what are people asking about solo female travel that I can respond to in a blog post. Are they reading a lot of posts? Are they you know, looking at a lot of images? Are there a lot of how-to videos and tutorials? Are there a lot of infographics? It gives you an idea of what people like to or how people like to digest content. I just want to see, cool. I'm trying to see the comments as I'm talking. So the fifth tip I wanted to say is you can actually add a question to your opt-in. Um, so I used to have this, I'm not using it now, but for a while in my email opt-in, you could put your email and then I asked a question that was totally optional if people didn't want to take the time to answer it, they didn't have to, but many people did. And I just asked, what are you most excited to read about visiting my blog or being an email subscriber. And you get to know, you know, what destinations are into, what topics, and you can tailor your content to that. And I saw a lot of people are really interested in safety. So I do get a lot of traffic from my posts on safety, which makes sense because I do write about solo female travel. Um, you might also want to survey your readers. You can actually send a survey to your email list, just asking them a question. I love writing emails that are really informal, very personal. Hey, how's your day going? 
I have a point, every email should have a point. And in this case, your point would be that you wanna know what they would love to see more of on your site. And then the end, at the end, ask them to actually hit reply and to let you know. And it's also a great way of building the relationship that you have with your readers. Recently, I also saw uh, Wandering Earl, who's a huge blogger, he actually wrote a blog post asking people what they wanted to see next on Wandering Earl. And he got a ton of comments of people saying, you know, a podcast, oh, I'd love to see more blog posts. I'd love if you, you know, did this and that. And you could see what your readers really want to get from you. So the sixth tip is one that is a little bit more, not advanced, but maybe lesser known, is using a tool called uh, Buzzsumo. Now there's a free version and a paid version, but with the free version, you will actually, actually be able to learn about your audience and their social media habits. So if you hop on to Buzzsumo, and that's B-U-Z-Z-S-U-M-O, you can type into the search bar either your niche or a established blog in your niche. You can type in their URL. Hit go. And you'll actually see different pieces of content listed and next to that on the right side, different social media channels listed with how much traction on each platform the content got. So maybe looking through, you see, wow, a lot of these posts are getting a ton of shares on Twitter. That can give you a good indication that your audience would be on Twitter. Um, if you have the pro version, you can actually see who shared the content as well. And you could do a little digging into those people. If you see this person on Twitter shared it, look at that person's Twitter profile, see what they're into, see where they're from, what kinds of things they share. It just gives you some more information that way. I also am a big fan of the Sumo Me plugin. Again, like BuzzSumo, there's a free version and then there's a pro version. I actually just use the free version right now, but I really love it and I imagine that the pro version has a lot of great tools. One of the free tools that is a part of uh, Sumo Me is heat maps. And basically once you activate heat maps, you can choose which pages and posts that the heat maps will be on. And you can actually check these pages and posts, including your homepage, to see what people are clicking. So I like to see, you know, in a long blog post that I have, what links people are clicking and on my homepage, you know, what people are clicking, which gives me a good idea of if I should move certain things around, maybe I need to move my opt-in form closer to the top. But in a post, I can see what links people are clicking. And again, what I found is that when I mention safety products in posts, they always get a ton of clicks which gives me, again, information that my audience is very interested in safety, which again makes sense because solo female travel and safety are very related. Um, and this is a very great tool if you sell products uh, or if you do affiliate linking because you can see if you need to move things around. I've tested different ways to list out uh, gear, whether with small pictures or with a carousel or just within the post or creating a packing list. And you can see what people respond to the most by using the heat maps. Um, and the final tip, which is kind of an eighth bonus tip, is to actually listen to your readers. And I know that sounds obvious, but I think it's something that people forget to do. So a lot of the things I write about, the services I offer, have come from questions I've gotten from my readers. So for example, I get a ton of emails about travel blogging and how people can start their own travel blogs, which is why I started doing blog coaching and uh, teaching blogging classes online. I'm from New York. I, live in, I lived in Brooklyn for five years. I live in the Upper East Side. I talk about these things all the time. And over the years, I've had so many readers ask me to show them around New York City so three and a half years ago, I got my guiding license and I started a tour company because I knew people really wanted this service for me and it's done really well. I offer photo tours and this all comes from listening to what people wanted. I offer um, travel planning itinerary, like planning people's itineraries because I had so many people asking me 
to help them plan itineraries and honestly mainly about South America, which I now, if you go to my sidebar, offer a 79 page South America guide for totally free. You just put in your email and you get the guide. And this t came from so many people asking me about traveling through South America. So it's just listening to people. If someone follows me on Instagram, I'll often pop over their profile, see what they're all about, where they're from, what they're posting, what they're into. Same with Facebook or Twitter. You can just kind of see what people are into, see the comments they're leaving, what they're commenting on. If you see a post has an unusual amount of comments, you can guess that this is a topic that your readers are interested in. So those are eight tips for you to get to know your audience. Again, this is so, so, so essential if you want to have a blog that really gets traffic and resonates with readers, you need to know who you are talking to and who you are trying to help, who you're writing the content for. And every single piece of content that you put out, whether it be on your blog, your Instagram, your Facebook, your email newsletter, should have this audience in mind. So those are my tips for you. I'm gonna repost this video with a bunch of helpful links and resources to help you kind of further your knowledge with this whole vlogging thing. So hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or message me privately as many of you guys have been doing. So enjoy.